Jiko. The County Government of Kajiado, with the approval of His Excellency Joseph Olelenku, would like to notify all landowners in Kajiado County to take advantage of the ongoing 100% waiver on outstanding land rates penalties, which will end on 15th September 2020. The County Government will institute the necessary measures to recover all unpaid rates and penalties. Payments should be made through the respective sub-county offices or through a banker's check or direct transfers. have provided quality building material with the widest range of associated steel products over the last three decades. Look for the Devki mark on a widest selling reinforcement, twisted and DMT rebars, which are KBS certified and have the diamond mark of quality. Devki Steel, Kenya's most trusted steel company. J, maumivu ya kichwa na kukosesha amani. Kaluma Strong utuliza maumivu ya kichwa, maumivu ya mwili na hata uondoa joto jingi mwilini. Kaluma Strong ina aspirin kama kiungo. Maumivu ya kizidi, muone daktari. Breastfeed your baby exclusively for the first 6 months of life. It helps them grow healthy and strong and protects them from infections and illnesses. Mothers with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 should be encouraged to initiate or continue to breastfeed while adhering to COVID-19 infection prevention and control measures to avert contact transmission of the virus to their infants and young children. Breast milk remains the best food and improves the baby's immunity. Breastfeeding is a foundation for a child's future health. Mothers who breastfeed reduce their risk of developing breast and ovarian cancers. Mavuno Fertilizers, a soil and crop specific fertilizer in Kenya, helps improve food security by improving crop yields through application of scientifically researched nutrition based fertilizers. More than 500,000 farmers in Kenya can have easy access at affordable packs of 1 kg to 50 kg across major agro dealers. Farmers who have used Mavuno Fertilizers have realized 30% more yield. Please feed your crop and soil with the best fertilizers for future prosperity. Call us today and learn how Mavuno Fertilizers is helping in increasing food production in. Africa. Lifebuoy is the world's first to report its sanitizers over 99.9% .9 effective against the COVID-19 coronavirus. Keep using Lifebuoy or any sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Stay safe. This is NTV. the 15th of September and you're right in time for NTV tonight. It is 9 o'clock and these are our top stories. Tonight, the president intervenes to unlock the gridlock on Revenue Avenue. I now put the question. And there's 50 billion worth of enticements on the table. Also tonight... 
free at last. But Garissa Governor Ali Korane is not yet free of the charges of profiting off a World Bank grant. Governor, hakuna mahali anaingilia kwa kazi ya pesa ya account. Kazi ya governor ni ya siyasa. Plus, too many degrees but too much closer to hot unemployment hell. It's all about just saving, be persistent and just push and be passionate about whatever you're having. Tips from those who have graduated top of the school of life in our special feature, Degree of Doubt. And also tonight, <laughs> a church caught in a bitter war. <laughs> the death toll in the Legio Maria church chaos rises to eight. NTV Tonight with Smriti Vidyarthi. Joining us tonight in sign language interpretation is David Agondoa. We begin tonight with yet another failed attempt to end the impasse over the county revenue sharing formula. President Uhuru Kenyatta is now promising an extra 50 billion shillings in the next financial year as part of efforts to strengthen devolution and unlock the revenue gridlock that has starved counties of the much needed cash. His proposals have now been forwarded to the 12 member committee formed to find a middle ground. Leila Mohammed begins our broadcast tonight. God, we beseech you to behold with your Tuesday afternoon sessions was expected to yet unlock the deadlock on how best to share the country's billions. Senators have tried and failed 10 times. Where we can informally discuss this matter. The session was adjourned early to allow members to deliberate on proposals by the select committee on a possible way forward. The revenue debate does not need 10 sittings, Mr. Speaker. It just requires goodwill. Before the afternoon session, President Uhuru Kenyatta ODM leader Raila Odinga and COG leadership led by Chair Wycliffe Oparanya and the Senate's leadership met in the morning at State House to try and end the stalemate that has dragged on for three months. Part of the enticements included a promise for an additional 50 billion shillings in the 2021-2022 financial year, with the President asking senators to urgently resolve the stalemate to avoid disrupting services in the counties. Senators have, however, expressed concern that a case filed before the courts where counties were seeking an increase in the equitable share may be withdrawn. Just in case there's anyone who has been untwisted by the executive to enter into a consent to withdraw that petition, which has already been opposed by Council of Governors and Katiba Institute, and I will oppose. If uh, you look at the proposals which came from the National Assembly, they wanted the Senate to withdraw the petition that the uh, Senate had filed in the High Court. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you are aware that there was a resistance to a move towards the withdrawal of that petition. And that is the position. The House had on Monday failed to hold an informal meeting that is a kamukunji, as ordered by Speaker Lusaka to strike a balance ahead of Tuesday's sitting. The Speaker had hoped that the House could be briefed on the resolution of the House leadership on the proposals fronted by a 12-member informal committee formed to strike a deal on the formula. The committee had presented two contradicting reports. Team Kenya proposes an eight-parameter formula and places the biggest weight on best share. It recommends that 273 billion of the 316.5 billion shillings be shared out equally and the remaining 53.5 billion be shared out using this formula. Senators supporting the one-man, one-shilling idea propose a 10-parameter formula which lays a bigger emphasis on health and basic share. Leila Mohamed, NTV. Elsewhere, Garissa Governor Ali Korane has been denied access to his office over his alleged involvement in the misappropriation of a 233 million shilling World Bank grant. Korane, who appeared before the anti-corruption magistrate Douglas Ogotti this morning, was, however, released on a cash bail after denying the charges. Zainab Ismail reports.
The Garissa County boss was freed on a 3.25 million cash bail following his arraignment in court this morning. He was charged alongside County Finance Chief Officer Ibrahim Nur Malo, Head of Treasury Mohamed Abdullahi, Municipality County Executive Officer Abdi Shale, and the Municipal Head of Accounting Ahmed Abdullahi. The four county officials were also freed on a 1.25 million shilling cash bail each. The five are accused of embezzling World Bank funds meant for infrastructural development under the Kenya Urban Support Program, amounting to 233 million shillings between February 25, 2019 and September 30, 2019. <laughs> the governor and the county officials are said to have allegedly channeled the funds from the county coffers to the Garissa Municipal Board and subsequently to individual accounts. They, however, lost a bid challenging a request by the prosecution to bar them from accessing the offices as State Council Alexander Muteti told the court not to depart from the High Court precedent that has seen five other governors also lose access to their offices after being implicated in corruption. They should not make any attempt to approach or interfere with any witness in whatever form. This will lead to automatic cancellation of bond terms all are accused to deposit their passports in court and only to leave the jurisdiction of the court with the court's permission. Kurani becomes the sixth county boss to be denied access to his office of allegations of graft. Meanwhile, supporters of the governor have allegedly threatened to burn down the EACC Northeastern Regional Offices in the county. The EACC signpost was pulled down in retaliation of the governor's arrest. The county boss was in 2018 the center of a criminal probe when a former county executive, Edris Mukhtar, was fatally shot in his home on the night of August 18, 2018. Korani and his brother were adversely mentioned by witnesses in the case, but Korani denied any involvement. A suspect who was arrested in connection with the shooting also died at Parklands Police Station under unclear circumstances. Police ruled it as suicide. The current graft case against him will now be mentioned on the 23rd of October. Zainab Ismail, NTV. <laughs> A silent but vicious war over the regulation and approval of medicine imports worth billions of shillings could be behind the influx of substandard products into the Kenyan market. Pharmacy and Poisons Board CEO Fred Suori claimed that a meeting with the Senate's ad hoc committee looking into the shady dealings at Kemsa, that some members of the Kemsa board were involved in bringing in supplies and could have been behind the push to have the Pharmacy and Poisons Board kicked out of the ports of entry. Yunus Omolo explains. Supremacy battles between two critical government agencies operating at the Mombasa port could have led to the saturation of substandard COVID-19 related goods into the market. Those differences between the Pharmacy and Poisons Board and the Kenya Bureau of Standards played out during a virtual meeting with the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on COVID-19. Chief Executive Officer Poisons Board Fred Sioi told senators that the body could no longer effectively tame the influx of compromised goods into the country as it no longer operates at the port. CAB's managing director Bernard Njiraini admitted that 25 samples of imported sanitizers failed to meet the alcohol content and had methanol. He also confirmed that face masks from China and the Netherlands were of poor quality. The Poison Board is the medicine's regulatory authority and ensures that all medical supplies imported via gazetted ports of entry comply with the country's approved specifications. Through, you've realized that so many do not meet the standards. You know, you know, is it possible that certain raw materials could have been imported, went through without the Poison Board having to verify their, their authenticity or their safety? And then now they are being used to create these um, substandard uh, products. However, the drug regulator was kicked out of the Mombasa support through a circular issued by Head of Public Service Joseph Kinyo last year, ostensibly to accelerate cargo clearance. But 
This has now triggered an interagency row with the Pharmacy and Poisons Board now absolving itself from blame for the substandard sanitizers that ended up in the market. For that, I may not be able to give that information as to whether any of the directors, the board members trade with the either CAPS. For CAPS, uh, it is clear that uh, they should not trade with CAPS. Uh, there is conflict there. But as whether they trade with CAMSA, I may not be... Uh, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board claims some members of the CAMSA board were also supplying medical items into the country and could have been behind the push to have them removed from the port to escape scrutiny. President Uhuru Kenyatta directed the country's investigative agencies to accelerate investigations into the use of COVID-19 funds and conclude the probe in three weeks, which expire today. Eunice Omolo, NTV. All right, now an update of the COVID-19 numbers. 96 people have tested positive for the virus out of a sample size of 3,270. This raises the country's caseload to 36,301. Out of the cases reported today, all are Kenyans. 121 people have the, uh, recovered and the total number of recoveries stands at 23,364. Meanwhile, 10 people have succumbed to the virus and that increases the death toll to 634. Nairobi County has the highest number of cases, recording 26, followed by Kisi with 10, Busia 8 and Mombasa, Wasingishu and Kisumu 7. The Ministry of Health has warned Kenyans not to let their guard down. You, you will clearly see that containment measures have been dropped. So again, for us here, the flat curve is not flat. Don't wait for a second wave. We are still on the first wave. And once we get the testing kits in place, and uh, we hope, and we've been promised by suppliers, that hopefully we should be getting some more kits by the end of this week and some more towards the end of uh, September. Meanwhile, there is no end in sight yet to the health workers' strike at the Baringo Level 5 hospital. Ailing patients have been pushed to seek treatment at alternative facilities to safeguard their lives as the Baringo County government failed to reach an agreement to end the stalemate today. Meanwhile, healthcare workers in Nairobi took to the streets to protest over what they term as poor working terms and conditions. Gina Kirori has more. Where the sights and sounds of patients, caregivers, doctors and nurses once filled the rooms and corridors of the Baringo Level 5 Hospital, silence now reigns. The sick and injured still stream in, hopeful but leave helpless. But now we are really overwhelmed as you can see from the background how the hospital is. Most of the patients are coming from very far, not our catchment area. Alternative hospitals are now becoming overwhelmed. <laughs> Kwa sababu mtoto wangu alikuwa anakoncheka hako naoma. Sasa kufika hospitali nikaona hakuna madaktari. Ikabidi nikuje nitafute dawa ya kienyeji. A meeting between the Baringo governor and health officials earlier today bore no fruit. The nurses are pushing for better working conditions and better terms of employment, a demand shared by the Kenya National Union of Nurses in Nairobi who are on their sixth day of their strike. We want the employer to address the issues of comprehensive medical cover. We want our employer to address the issue of our, some of our colleagues who have worked for more than five years and they are still on uh, probation and the issue of salaries. The healthcare workers say they will continue striking until their demands are met, leaving ailing patients to fend for themselves. Gena Kerori, NTV. Politics now and Deputy President William Ruto has hit out at his political rivals who have questioned his continued support towards the churches. Speaking at his official Karen residence where he received a delegation of Narok County religious and political leaders, the Deputy President warned politicians against turning Kenyans against each other. Last week. Akasema akaambia watu wataita tapeta huyo deputy president siku hizi anakuote mambo ya biblia hata anashinda bishop sijui anaenda kanisani sijui namna gani sijui namna gani so mimi na quote biblia kwa sababu ndio nimefundishwa 
kama kuna kurasa za mambo ya uganga mimi sijui so i cannot quote yeye yeah, anaweza kuendelea na hiyo na nyinyi msikuwe na wasiwasi na hii makelele yote na upinzani na nini And in an unexpected turn of political events, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga's son, that's Raila Jr., hit out at his father's ODM party, saying it had lost its way. In a tweet, the young Odinga said, quote, We as ODM need to find our way back to basics. We're not just about private jets and sleigh queens whilst abusing rival politicians. We have a development agenda clearly outlined in our manifesto. Let's focus on service delivery, democratic space, protecting private citizen rights. His latest remarks come just two days after he challenged Sunnah East MP Junet Mohammed to use his position as minority whip in the National Assembly to fight for Kapserat MP Oscar Sudi's rights to express himself. Raila Jr.'s tweets have sparked sharp reactions, with some even claiming he could be warming up to Deputy President William Ruto. Now, Kandara Member of uh, Parliament Alice Wahome has moved to court seeking orders to stop Nairobi Metropolitan Service, that's NMS boss, Major General Mohamed Badi, from attending cabinet meetings. The Kandara MP argues that Badi's participation in cabinet meetings was, quote, illegal, unconstitutional and void. She further argues that the secretary to the cabinet violated the constitution by allowing a stranger in the cabinet. Last week, State House announced that Major General Badi would be allowed to attend cabinet meetings after he took the oath of secrecy in a ceremony witnessed by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Badi was tasked with transforming the city and dismantling cartels that have held the city at ransom for years. The death toll from the Monday clash between police and Legio Maria adherents at Gotkweru in Migori County has risen to eight, according to the church's officials. Pope Lawrence Kalul, whose faction is headquartered at the shrine, told journalists today that three more faithful died while receiving treatment, while two minors are still missing. Oko Okusa is keeping with that story. These are some of the shocking scenes captured on Monday 14th at Got Kweru when police and Legio Maria faithfuls clashed, claiming the lives of eight people now. And today, one of the men embroiled in the power struggle over the papacy, Lawrence Kalul, took a swipe at the police whom he accused of brutality. <laughs> Pope Kalul's camp claims that some of the policemen deployed to quell yesterday's clash were actually compromised by their rivals, led by Pope Raphael Adika. Migori County Commissioner Boaz Cherotich, however, declined to comment on the matter. This morning, Faithfuls allied to Pope Kalul's faction vowed to stay put at Got Kweru, despite rising fears of fresh attacks from their opponents. Monday clashes were ignited when members of Pope Adika's camp attempted to gain entry into Got Kweru for the climax of the annual pilgrimage. The group was repulsed by Pope Kalul's faction with police being caught up in the resulting chaos. We were going for prayer association. Unfortunately, this is the third time this is happening. The widening schism between the Legio Maria adherents is a result of a long-running power struggle between Pope Adika and the late Pope Romanus Ongombe, who was succeeded by Pope Kalul. The Adika Ongombe power was date back to 2009. In May 2019, the two leaders briefly ended their protracted antagonism before it erupted again after their hardline supporters refused to cede ground. We came to the agreement that we should analyze all these things. Now, when this is finished, we hope there is peace. 
The church's founder, Simeo Melkio Ondeto, died on September 5th, 1991. Okokusa NTV. Over 20 people have been arrested in Sigotik, Njoro sub-county in Mount Narok following conflicts that left one dead and 12 injured over the weekend. The ongoing dispute over land within the Mao region has also left tension at an all-time high in Doswa, that's in Nesutu Ward, after several houses were set ablaze. Ruth Samway tells us more. <laughs> The land conflict within the Mao Narok region has left many nursing fresh injuries and others rubbing old wounds. As Jen, a resident of Sigotik, holds on to a certificate of her treasured piece of land that she was allocated back in 1997, she painfully recounts the conflict that robbed her of her son 14 years ago. <laughs> The recent fighting in the region erupted after new beacons were erected by the Kenya Forest Service. While visiting Doswa in a suit where more than five houses were set ablaze, the Rift Valley County Commissioner said that the new beacons were put in place to start the review process of the borderlines that were established in 1997. So that, 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 that beacon simply means we start from the known to the unknown. Eh? The known is like 1997, but now there are people there. What do we do with these people? How many are they? So that you know, we get to us. Residents are now calling on the government to intervene by bringing a lasting solution to this problem as hundreds of residents are now living in fear of being evicted. The commissioner has urged residents to remain calm, issuing a warning to anyone planning to take action into their own hands. The two warring communities are expected to be represented during discussions. Meanwhile, police officers have been sent to secure the area. Ruth Sarmoy, NTV. All right, that story brings us to our first break on NTV tonight. A degree of doubt, part two, is coming up after the break, so do stay with us. When the world changed, it made us go back to the simple joys and love the little things even more, like serving up your best, eating together, and sharing more. Now, oh, we'll take nothing for granted, and always remember to taste the simple joys. Coca-Cola, taste the simple joys. Ah, Helen Paul. Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I've been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapik's thick formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. Wow, now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah. Now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours. All day, we expect our mouth to do all kinds of things. That is why it needs all-round protection. New Oral-B Pro Health Toothpaste. Its advanced technology helps prevent both tooth holes and gum problems that can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your teeth, giving them all-round protection. Because your mouth is doing more than you think. New Oral-B Pro Health. All-round protection for your whole mouth. Devki Steel Mills have provided quality building material with the widest range of associated steel products over the last three decades. Look for the Devki mark on a wide setting reinforcement, twisted and DMT rebars, which are KBS certified and have the diamond mark of quality. Devki Steel, Kenya's most trusted steel company.
Melissa? Mom, it's Dad's birthday today. I'm giving him a party just like he gives me. Nothing makes a mother more proud than seeing her child growing up. But I know that as she learns to care for others, she'll face even more germs and the risk of illnesses. That's why you need strong dental protection. Just one cup of dental protects your home and family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Growing up needs dental protection. The dental range is available on Jumia. Shop safely and conveniently today. Parenting is all about learning when to be tough and when to be gentle. Tough. Gentle. But when it comes to fever, you need to be both. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy. Hmm, tough call. Panadol Baby and Infant. Tough on fever, gentle on your child. I'm experienced now, professional. I don't wrestle with an alligator. I don't tussle with a whale. I don't handcuff lightning, throw thunder in jail. This is the game that's going to be the Bay of Bishop. It's a lean old Betty match. Last week, I murdered a rock. Brilliant control game. Oh, for heaven's sake! Angela Stone hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. We don't let us Tonight I cut the light off in my bedroom, hit the switch was in the bed before the room was gone. Bad. Been chopping trees. I done something new for this fight. I'm gonna show you how great I am. against dad. Are you sure? If I go down, I'm taking him down with me. What's this, Anna? We want to see your downfall. He even tried to kill me. She cannot be trusted. I'm innocent. I have done nothing against our country. That's the biggest gun smuggling business in the country. It's my father who runs it. Welcome to Garden of Joy in Machakos by Optivan. This is a gated community that is strategically located only seven minutes drive from Komata. The title deeds are ready. Call us today on 0790-300-300. Welcome back. With so many students graduating each year from institutions of higher learning, a degree is no longer a guarantee of employment. In our second and final part of Degree of Doubt, NTV's Rose Wangoi spoke to several young people who have ventured into entrepreneurship. While some are graduates, others have never been to university, but have nonetheless pursued their passions and become self-employed. My name is George Moturi from Agritech Organic Farm. I'm 25 years old. We are based in uh, Kaga, Rari Sub County, Kiabu County. In this structure, we have a system where we call vermiculture, that is the rearing of earthworms, for the purpose of production of organic fertilizer and organic foliar feed. The beds we have are uh, compost manure, that is cow dung, dry leaves, and also wet leaves. Also we have the worms inside the beds, and that is where the process of uh, decomposition of that waste goes on. We do this either once in a week, then we add some water to make the, that uh, concentration moist, so that the worms can be able to come and feed. I completed high school back in 2013. I had a Cyprus, so I, I applied uh, to go to KU and 
my application went through. I had applied the BCOM, but now I had a challenge of getting now the, the fees. I had someone who wanted to pay uh, for my fees, but I had to go for a course which he wanted, which was uh, uh, education. But uh, personally, I was not passionate about teaching. My mom is a teacher, but uh, personally, I didn't feel like it was my thing. I had never wanted to be employed. I started uh, chicken farming, it was doing good, but now the cost of feeds and uh, considering that I was doing indigenous chicken, it was not really viable. So I started looking for an alternative way of feeding my chicken, and that's when I came into vermiculture. On evaluating, I realized that the compost we get now from the worms was of high quality, so I measured more on uh, producing now the compost and the foria for organic farming. So we feed uh, the worms on a variety of items. One, mostly we use cow dung, which is readily available, rabbit droppings, uh, something like napier grass, which the cows have already fed and its waste. Uh, we use other leaves like tithonia, uh, Russian comfrey, and variety of other leaves. We have to give uh, this bed some time, a period of one to two weeks, without feeding, without adding any water, so that the excess uh, moisture or the excess liquid, either we evaporate, so that it will be easy for us to harvest and sieve easily without uh, any complications. After a period of uh, most two to three months, the worms will have uh, broken down everything and then we'll be left with uh, a very fine manure or compost which now we will harvest. We will have some leftovers which were hard for the worms to feed on so and we'll be able to harvest now that and sieve thereby separating the worms and uh, the fine particles and the other bigger particles and we'll be able to get now the, our, fine, uh, our fine particles which will be the organic fertilizer. A vermi liquid, it's uh, any liquid that comes from the bed once we add some water. We say it contains nutrients which are available on this bed provided we are adding some water so the water will come and uh, carry the nutrients through to our correction point. So vermi liquid is a type of uh, organic fertilizer or organic foria feed which we use to spray our vegetables, fruits. I started back in 2014. After one year, I'm not getting anything after two years, but still something, something inside me was telling me to push on, to push on. We sell our, uh, our compost at 70 bob per kilo. We sell our liquid at 150 per liter. We sell the worms at 2,000 per kilo. One bed like this in two to three months can give us uh, 150 to 200 kilos. We can get uh, about uh, 20, 15 to 20 kilos of worms. For the liquid in three months, we can get uh, from 60, to 100 liters of the liquid from each and every bed. After every three months, we are able to make now from the beds about 50 to 100,000 from now our vermicomposting units here. I've also employed someone else who works uh, in this farm. I get farmers from different regions to train them on uh, the worms and insects. I do consultancy work uh, works for uh, different uh, groups or institutions.
I'm also planning to get back to campus so that I can be able to manage my businesses better. Fashion. I love fashion. I just love dressing up. Going to university is not a guarantee that you're gonna get a job <laughs> or make it in life. Number one, you, you honestly have to be street smart and book smart at the same time. I was in Maseno school and uh, I scored an A minus. I pursued a degree in uh, astronomy and astrophysics at the University of Nairobi. I graduated, but before I did, I ventured into entrepreneurship at um, third year. I love art. I draw, and fashion was something that I, I never actually thought that I would apply my artistic uh, self in it. So I used to draw a lot of sketches, and then once upon a day I found myself uh, approaching a tailor and asked him to do a design and he couldn't do it the way I honestly envisioned it. So I decided, uh, these guys are letting me down, why can't I just go and do it myself? Six years later, here we are. 8,000 shillings that I saved for around three semesters <laughs> to buy that. <laughs> so it's all about just saving, be persistent and just push and be passionate about whatever you're having was working from uh, my room and that's why I learned how to put up a suit <laughs> and the first client was uh, definitely myself because I had to try out my product. It was something that I used to enjoy so most of my buddies back in then asked me why shouldn't you sell these things so when I started selling that's when I realized oh so there's actually a market for this. I learned to s how to sew partly on, on YouTube. I was an apprentice to a certain tailor who actually showed me how to like just do a straight line when, you, when you're stitching. One of the major challenges that I faced when I started the business is I was too young and the, the business that I'm in, the older the tailor, the better the cloth. The other issue that I have was to raise capital to do a couple of things, maybe to do my marketing, to do my branding. But I decided to go with bootstrap financing whereby you just save, 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 when you get it, heat it up. We deal in bespoke tailoring services. We majorly focus on suits, work suits, wedding suits. We've done a couple of uh, styling events. We recently ventured in uh, doing African wear. My business in the last six years has been fun. Depending on your budget, I can either source the fabric locally or I import a special fabric for you. We can do between 15 and 20 suits in a week. That was when everything was <laughs> okay. Business has definitely gone down with the COVID. Yeah, um, especially with the fact that now majority of my clients are working from home. There's no need for you to wear a suit to work. And then now with weddings being restricted, that also has kind of put a, put, a, put a knife on my business's heart. I'm happy where I am and this is the path that I chose and there's only one way forward. I don't think I can go back. Yeah. But astrophysics still lives in me, so given the opportunity and chance, maybe I can do consultancy, <laughs> but not like being in a lab or in an office. I find office spaces too restrictive. It's still mysterious how a pencil and paper could bring so much peace in my life and joy. I am an artist, a hyper-realistic and abstract artist. I am 26 years old. I cleared high school in 2011. I got an A-and I was admitted to Technical University of Mombasa to pursue building and civil engineering. But along the way, I realized 
that the course was not accredited by the Engineering Board of Kenya. My performance started going down in a way I couldn't believe because I didn't have that love for engineering anymore. When I called Jab and forwarded my case to them, they told me that inter-institutional transfer was only possible within the first year of studying and I had already done two years of campus studying. I decided to drop out from the campus. Since my primary school education, I've been always a bright kid, a kid that was so much valued by the society and used as a role model by some parents to their kids. My parents also were very disappointed. I tried to explain to them about the issue of accreditation, but they could eat, understand what accreditation is. This led to a lot of frustration in my life. At a point, I felt like I was hopeless. I decided to try something that I used to do, a small drawing on a sketchbook. And up to now, it's still mysterious how a pencil and paper could bring so much peace in my life and joy. It gave me an easy opportunity to train and remind myself about that. With the small knowledge I had acquired in high school, I tried to advance it by studying from the internet from various artists. For the last few years I've been doing art, I've focused on portraits, people portraits and animals. I found so much peace and solace in art, found so much joy. It was fun making art pieces, converting people's faces into a beautiful art piece. I have a passion for the small details. You have to lay each and every detail perfectly to where it's supposed to be. It will take me like, if I estimate, maybe 50 hours plus to finish the lion. I started by marketing my works, posting them on Facebook, marketing them. I saw my commissions increase from maybe two a month to five, and now I can do about 15 commissions a month. The same community that was using me as a bad example, actually some of them used to mock me that I dropped out of campus to, to draw. Everyone knows how COVID-19 disrupted people's plans. I still have a hope of having a solo exhibition. Art is something I love. It has been a great part of my life. It's something in me, something I love to do. And through it, I'm able to pay my bills, earn a livelihood. Even if I pursued engineering and I came to graduate, at the end of it, I still believe I would have been an artist. My parents were pushing me. You have to do medicine, you have to do medicine, but I didn't like medicine in the first place. My father is in the medical field. So when I cleared high school, my grades combination I had qualified for nursing, so I didn't want to take nursing. So they told me you have to do IT because everyone is doing IT. In 2012, I joined JK Watt in Nakuru town. I did IT just for six months, then I dropped out. I realized it was not my passion. I didn't like IT. At times I will not go even for lectures. So my mom asked me, what do you want to do? I told her, cooking. I had made up my mind, so I applied for a January intake at Mount Kenya University to do a bachelor's in hospitality management. When I graduated in 2016, I was already working in a hotel. 
working in a hotel sometimes it's hectic because of the hours, the long hours, you have to stand, you have to make the customer smile, you have to smile for the customer. So I decided to go into self-employment in 2019. Because of the experience that I got from the hotels, I, th I thought I was matured enough to start a business. My passion for baking started when I was in class six, using a jiko because we didn't have an oven, or maybe sometimes you go to a neighbor who has an oven. I basically bake uh, birthday cakes, anniversary cakes, graduation cakes. I do muffins, uh, Danish pastries. Everyone can bake, so it's just the passion, and it's fulfilling on my side because it brings out the joy in me. So these are my strawberry queen cakes. You know, sometimes cakes can disappoint you, especially when it's out of the oven, it has not yet cooled, then it breaks. So you see no one will take it. If it's not good, I redo the cake. Or if I can't redo the cake, I sell it to them. Yes, my parents buy the cake, you know. In my mind, I think that I won't get orders because of COVID. People are at home, no money. But God has been faithful. I've received lots of orders during this COVID season. Children are celebrating birthdays, couples. In a week, I can bake like five cakes. Or maybe queen cakes. Most of them prefer queen cakes or even bread. Uh, there's a shop in town where I also do the small pastries. Now the cake is complete. My future plans, yeah, I need to open a bigger shop in town, a cake house. I'll offer employment to young people. moving and inspirational real life stories right there after the break degree of doubt continues for a better tomorrow don't forget to do the one two three with colgate every night Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. Sona moja kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi pata ushauri wa daktari. Get fresh, gotta get fresh. Mavuno Fertilizers, a soil and crop specific fertilizer in Kenya, helps improve food security by improving crop yields through application of scientifically researched nutrition based fertilizers. More than 500,000 farmers in Kenya can have easy access at affordable packs of 1 kg to 50 kg across major agro dealers. Farmers who have used Mavuno Fertilizers have realized 30% more yield. Please feed your crop and soil with the best fertilizers for future prosperity. Call us today and learn how Mavuno Fertilizers is helping in increasing food production in Africa. Africa. Moi University would like to inform all first years that online registration and orientation for the first years 2020 and 2021 class is ongoing. Visit www.firstyears.mu.ac.ke to register. Online classes will begin on Monday 21st September 2020. Qualified candidates are also informed that online application for the September 2020 and January 2021 intakes in our various degree, postgraduate and diploma programs is ongoing. Going. A 
apply now. Visit our website www.mu.ac.ke and click on the admissions link to select your desired course and follow the guidelines to complete application. For more inquiries, contact us on 0790-940508 or admissions at mu.ac.ke. Moi University, the foundation of knowledge. We all are looking for products to protect ourselves from viruses, but not all products protect us. Did you know that using Dettol soap and water protects against viruses? Many viruses are surrounded by an envelope with receptors that enable them to enter a human cell and cause infection. Dettol soap destroys the outer layer of the virus and effectively removes it. Protect your family from the spread of viruses with Dettol. Dettol cleans and is now tested and proven to be effective against COVID-19 virus. This has been Medibax for Dettol. The Dettol range is available on Jumia. Shop safely and conveniently today. Sensitivity pain fast with Sensodyne Rapid Action for clinically proven relief in 60 seconds. Disinfect and protect your home with JIC. JIC kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing germs. Disinfect floors, kitchen, and bathroom surfaces and wash white clothes, towels, and dishcloths with JIC bleach. Just JIC it. The County Government of Kajiado, with the approval of His Excellency Joseph Olelenku, would like to notify all landowners in Kajiado County to take advantage of the ongoing 100% waiver on outstanding land rates penalties, which will end on 15 September 2020. The County Government will institute the necessary measures to recover all unpaid rates and penalties. Payments should be made through the respective sub-county offices or through a banker's check or direct transfers. For more than 10 years now, One Acre Fund has worked with farmers across Kenya to give them access to quality seeds, fertilizer, and farming inputs through affordable financing options. To find out how you too can join the One Acre Fund program, dial star 689 hash. One Acre Fund, Nkulima, Kwanzaa. Graduates enter the job market with the hope of getting formal employment, but what they don't know is that only one out of five of their lot stands a chance. This means majority of them have to find alternative ways of earning an income. We believe papers will grant us success instead of working for their success. So you find someone coming from graduating, you toil for like two years, what next? You do a master's. You go to an employer, you feel over entitled. The employer feels now this one is even too overqualified. The job that I want to offer is actually just a tiny job. <laughs> you know, so it's usually never about the papers. And I think people should stop chasing papers and start chasing purpose. There is no way the formal economy will ever be able to produce the kind of jobs, the number of jobs and the kind of jobs that the youth are looking for. We are currently also doing a, a survey in the informal economy to figure out what's really happening there. And as we've been talking about informalizing the informal economy, finding out does this really resonate with the informal sector players? Do they want to be formalized? So how can we offer them incentives as an employer's body for them to see the attraction in formalizing 
And that is something that is going on so that we can support government with facts and figures, with statistics, to be able to inform national policy in this uh, very important area. So I think entrepreneurship is something that we as employers support and the government is looking at how to support youth who would be then well-established entrepreneurs starting small but building sustainable businesses that would in, in the end also provide employment. I think we neglected um, even agriculture as a subject of study. Uh, it lost its glory. Africa can be the supplier of uh, food so that we are food sufficient as a continent and as a country. It's a shame that we have to import things like maize sometimes, which are things we can produce. We need to look at our sugar sector, for instance, the traditional sectors that we have, the tea sector, so that um, these can be ongoing in terms of the cash crops that we export, but also small-scale agriculture. There are a lot of young people who are actually doing a lot of wonderful work in agriculture. You just need to, to discover it and start small and then that is something you can be sure of. But of course they need markets, they need to be linked to markets where they can sell their products, which is where uh, perhaps the private sector comes in. We see that the government imports a lot of fertilizers and synthetic fertilizers, which are in the wrong run they are bringing uh, more damage than good to our nation, to our soils. So the big picture in this is that we do this big, we provide more organic fertilizer, we benefit our soils, we eat healthy food. I hope and honestly really hope that some of our industries like Rivertex and, and Raymond come back to life because they, were, they had real quality fabrics. But I think our government really needs to pump in so much effort. Actually, the fabrics that come from outside are slightly <laughs> substandard. The key thing here is to generate the factories that perhaps have um, become dormant, have been closed and not functional, to make sure that there is economic activity beyond Nairobi. That was the idea behind uh, devolution. But because it's not happening fast enough, Nairobi is the, seems to represent the hope and ambition for everybody. If that could be resolved and then we create cottage industries for the youth to be able to, to go to, I think that would address the issue. But until we are able to create economic activity in different parts of the country to the level where the youth population can see some hope, then we'll continue to see this migration into the city. Our generation is not patient. We live in a generation where instant gratification is all we seek for. I'd blame partly uh, our social media for that because then the kind of standards that are being set out here, you as a young person, <laughs> you want to drive a Range Rover, your father didn't drove his first Corolla in like 20 years. You want, since you got a first job, you want to drive a Range, how? People are not ready and willing to work hard these days for whatever their goals are, yeah? So, Rome was not built in a day. The whole world has this quick fix approach and we've inadvertently passed it to our youth. They are grappling with the world that they found and everything is fast, everything is available online. I can understand the challenges they are facing, but the values that we have as Africans, I think at the end of the day, are still there. You may want either your child to be either a lawyer, a doctor, but maybe the the your your child is not is really not passionate about that course you are uh, advising him or her to do. Queen cakes, that one, the strawberry. Parents uh, allow your children to do what they feel like doing, and support your children because my parents have supported me. Even if your kid wants to become a DJ at a younger age just allow them, it's what, it's inside them. If there's a chance of converting your passion into a career, then I think that will be the best thing to do. My parting shot to those guys who have recently graduated is, number one, it's not easy, and no one will hand it over to you. Be ready to toil, 
but be optimistic. Um, there's no shortcuts in this. There are projects like the Kenya Youth Employment Program, the Kyo Program, to which uh, the FK is a part of. There are ongoing studies to see exactly what is happening in the informal economy and how can we support the youth in this. We are working with the ILO in that area. We are looking at informal settlements in the refugee camps where there's a lot of youth already and there's um, a lot that's going on there. So looking at how to scale that up to encourage this entrepreneurial spirit and build the skills of the young population to be able to run their enterprises in a sustainable manner. Degree of doubt there with NTV's award-winning journalist Rose Wangoy. Some feedback on Twitter, Baba Claudia, you say, it's not a must, you get a white-collar job. Self-employed is a sure bet. Uh, Dalen, you say, funny how most narrators on Degree of Doubt say YouTube has helped them. This is very true. Those downloads and tutorials are lifesavers. My baking, yarning, etc. have been perfected thanks to it. Uh, thank you so much for this NTV Kenya, says Tonak Kimathi. At least there's hope in self-employment for us young people. And uh, Rita, you say remarkable stories on degree of doubt. And then you quote something by Alvin Toffler. And it goes like this, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. Thanks for your feedback on Twitter and on our other social media platforms. We take a break now. Julian Zamboko is up next with the business news. Top dressing tea. Avoid top dressing during heavy rains as it will be eroded away. Weeding should be done before top dressing to ensure they don't regrow. More than 500,000 farmers in Kenya can have easy access at affordable packs of 1 kg to 50 kg across major agro dealers. Farmers who have used Mavuno fertilizers have realized 30% more yield. Please feed your crop and soil with the best fertilizers for future prosperity. Call us today and learn how Mavuno fertilizers is helping in increasing food production in Africa. When you buy a bar of Cadbury Dairy Milk Chocolate, you can help change the story. That's because we will use part of the proceeds to donate milk to less fortunate children across our beautiful country. Let us come together and show the generous spirit that is inside of all of us. Cadbury Dairy Milk. There's a glass and a half in every one. From far with you, mm, I even gifted you a magnificent house. Hmm. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> Please help me. When it comes to fever, you need to be both. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy. Panadol Baby and Infant, tough on fever, gentle on your child. <laughs> from Molfix. Let's see what they're developing right now. Molfix really pants with anatomic fit technology. New Molfix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Molfix. Best quality Keb certified steel. TMT steel bars. Produced from the most modern machines and technology. Reliable and with the highest strength. Suitable for all types of construction. 
that is highways buildings bridges houses and roads that look for the devki mark on a wide selling reinforcement twisted and dmt rebars which are kvs certified and have the diamond mark of quality devki steel kenya's most trusted steel company It is time to get down to business. Welcome, I am Julian Amboko. The Kenya Revenue Authority is looking to raise at least 1 billion shillings from the minimum tax in the six months ending 30th June 2021. The new tax, which takes effect on January 1st, 2021, seeks to widen the tax base by allowing the Revenue Authority to tax even loss-making companies in a bid to ramp up revenue mobilized. The Kenya Revenue Authority seeks to raise 1.73 trillion shillings in the current financial year, despite the 172 billion shillings foregone revenue due to the relief measures extended by the government in light of the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The authority has denied the argument that the timing of the minimum tax is inauspicious. The minimum tax is payable only if, the, if, if the, um, the amount of installment tax is lower than yes. that, uh, the amount computed from, uh, from minimum tax. Yeah. So um, when the economy again improves, we expect more people to be, make better returns from their businesses and probably will render much of the minimum tax redundant. And away from matters public finance, Parsons Fishing in Lake Victoria will now be required to seek the approval of the State Department on Fisheries to place cages in the lake. This follows a directive from the Principal Secretary, Professor Michel Intiba, who says that unrestricted fishing has bred strife within the East African region. Michel has directed that such requests be channeled through the respective county executive officials for agriculture. In 2019, output from the fishing sector was valued at 48.9 billion shillings, compared to 43.6 billion shillings in 2018. What will happen eventually in the larger East African community mechanism? We are going to develop modalities like, we are only young, we are going to develop modalities like it is in the rest of the world. Our research institutes, Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute, together with the Fisheries Research Institute in Uganda, the Research Institute in Tanzania, must conduct research to tell us how much fish is harvestable in this lake each year. Staying with the agriculture sector, rice farmers are left to lose a strife over the location of a rice husks processing factory threatens to paralyze the kickoff of the 600 million shillings project. The county government of Kirinyaga wants the factory to be located in Kerugoya, whereas a section of leaders led by the member of parliament from Mwea want the same to be located in Mwea. The 10,400 hectares of Kirinyaga county are put under rice farm with the county generating 45,700 tons of rice worth 3.9 billion shillings. The factory is targeted at helping rice farmers diversify their incomes away from reliance on the raw crop. World Bank wanajua ya kwamba mchere inatoka mwea. Na kama wanataka kutunjengea factory ya kutengeneza mbao kutoka kwa husky ya mchere, watengeneza hiyo factory mwea. Tuko nanguka. Tuko na wamumu, tuko na karaba, tuko na diva. Hii stores hazina kazi. Lete factory kule, ofisi yenda ijengwe, pahali munataka ijengwe, masekretaries wakae huko. Now let's close by taking a look at the retail sector. The recruitment agency of Tasky's supermarket, Atemi's Outsourcing, found itself between a rock and a hard place after employees of the struggling retailer stormed its offices in Nairobi demanding settlement of salary arrears. The employees of Tasky's say they have not been, been paid rather since July and are demanding quick settlement of their arrears as the retailer moves to close a 2 billion shillings capital injection deal with a private equity fund based in Mauritius. In July, the Employment and Labor Relations Court compelled Tasky's to negotiate plant pay cuts with staff after the Kenya Union of Commercial Food and Allied Workers challenged the nature of salary reductions effected in April. That's, that's the case, uh, and that's why I'm telling you we'll call them, sir. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it's here, huh? with me. Then I'm going to work at the Then I'm going to work at the six. I'm going to be a queen. Then I'm going to be a queen. Kindly go home. Why? 
barua yako ndio hii inafaa unafutwa na pesa yako unapatiwa eh unaenda na peaceful way sasa hizi tunaumia yani tunaumia tunalala njaa hakuna pesa tumepewa for the last three months na tunalipa rent tunasomesha watoto wanataka wakule sisi wenyewe tunafaa tuende kazini na pesa hatuna sasa hii tunatuma kwa MD wetu atulipe pesa zetu atutaki kazi yake and that report on Taskies takes us to the close of business enjoy the rest of your viewing NTV Sport in association with Showmax from the business news to some sports news now and Gormahia are officially the 2019-2020 Kenyan Premier League champions. Gore's victory was confirmed by the Sports Disputes Tribunal, that's the SDT, which threw out an appeal against the Football Kenya Federation over their decision to end the season prematurely due to the coronavirus. SDT Chair John Ohaga ruled that the petition was not constituted properly as FKF was within its rights to make the crucial decision. FKF President Nick Mwendwa announced Kogalo as champions of the top-tier league and Nairobi City stars as winners of the National Super League. Gomahia will represent Kenya in the CAF Championships uh, League next season. Meanwhile, the 2020-2021 FKF PL season will commence as soon as the government gives the green light for the resumption of sports activities in the country. Well, there is always a first time for everything, and for the former world youth silver medalist Sandra Felis Chebet, the 40th London Marathon is it. Chebet is lined a place in London on the 4th of October. A reporter, Lois Wangoy, visited Chebet at a training camp in Londiani in Kericho County. At Le Motit training camp, Sandra Felis Chibet trains together with the World Under 20 cross country silver medalist Beatrice Chibet. The two have been training together during the COVID 19 restrictions. I mean, I should Beatrice Chibet to who are to Nasaidian and I, Mokamambana Speed, to come here, I bad a jack graduate for road races here and I came back to Anjasan, San and Nasaidianga for speed. It will be Sandra's first outing as a pacer. She says she is up for the challenge. I am going to pace with you. I am going to be able to do it. I am going to do a major event. I am going to do it. I am going to do it. I am going to prepare with you. I am going to do it. 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 Next again, do a At 24 years, Sandra believes that pacing for the more experienced athletes will give her the experience needed to excel in marathon running. Kama our Britain na Fivia, when you are in sasa niwe na ngufu sana. Good train to mina taka niwe kama wow na ten ata ni pita wow. Mina ntajaribu sasa maybe next year ma next of next year full marathon. <laughs> With a personal best of one hour, eight minutes and 14 seconds in the half marathon, Sandra will pace for the group that includes world record holder Bridget Kusgay, 2018 winner Vivian Chariot and world champion Ruth Chepnitic. Her coach has adjusted the program to suit the purpose. <laughs> We leave Lemotit village as Sandra continues to work hard to ensure as she peace makes for Team Kenya in London Marathon, then she does a good job. Lois Wangoi, NTV Sports, Kericho County. Good for her and we will of course be cheering her on on the 4th of October. Now Arsenal captain Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has signed a new three-year deal with the club. The Gabon striker scored in Arsenal's win at Fulham on their first game of the English Premier League season. The 31-year-old striker joined the Gunners in January 2018 and won the Premier League Golden Boot in his first full season in 2018-2019. Meanwhile, Aston Villa are planning to build a top team around England international Jack Grealish after he signed a new five-year contract. The 25-year-old playmaker and club captain had been linked with a move away during the transfer window.
NTV Sport in association with Showmax. All right, and the sports news closes. NTV tonight, David Agondoa has been our sign language interpreter. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. Do stay with us uh, tomorrow. It is team coverage Wednesday and Mark Masai will be leading our team. Have yourselves a good night and stay safe. This is NTV. I help women find independence by training them in fish farming. It's tough on my back, joints, and can cause headaches. Panadol Extra relieves multiple types of pain. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Parenting is all about learning when to be tough and when to be gentle tough gentle but when it comes to fever you need to be both panadol baby and infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy hmm tough call panadol baby and infant 